I'm Pastor George Borkhardt, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. It's our privilege to talk about privilege. Woke Wednesday takes on privilege. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Like, subscribe, ring the bell, get the app, donate. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, like our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, ring the bell for notifications, get our app. It's available on all major platforms. Donate a tax deductible gift to higherthings.org slash giving keeps us putting the ears, filling the ears of youth all over the world with the saving gospel of Jesus Christ. Give today. Wednesday is Woke Wednesday, which means we're joined by Erica Jacoby. She is the executive director of Higher Things, the faith that runs the place. And she will be guiding us through today's, she'll be privileged to guide us through today's topic. How you doing, Erica? I'm doing well. I'm, I'm not sure if these are cool anymore, but I had to borrow these beats because I lost my ear pods. And so I'm feeling very, these are called cams, right? Is that what it's called in the industry? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Am I cool? Am I not? I don't know. I don't know anymore. I'm Ever, so out of touch. You're as cool as a very privileged white woman at the under 40. In woke terminology, what does privilege mean? And what does it mean that someone tells you to check your privilege? Go. So, have you heard this term? Has somebody told you this? I've seen it a lot personally on social media, particularly during election time. Yeah. Has anybody told you to like step out of your privilege or? Thomas. Okay, just wondering. Okay, right. so let's 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 start with privilege. Um, the way privilege is defined is unearned access to social power based on membership in a dominant social group. Um, so it's really the belief that members of particular groups, their sexualities or genders or sexes or races, are given advantage or afforded advantages in society be for being a member of that group. So then the term test your privilege is a phrase uh, that folks use when someone is, um, when they feel, when a person feels that um, someone else is operating in a sort of uh, sheltered mindset, um, um, a, a racial mindset or sexual mindset, um, some other form of uh, exceptionalism. So this phrase is generally used when someone is speaking in an arrogant or ignorant manner or being smug or condescending as a result of that privileged status they were born into or achieved by virtue of their race, et cetera. So um, let me give you some examples to make it a little bit clearer. So things that you would respond with uh, check your privilege to would be something like, if the ghetto is so bad, why don't they just move out? And then you would respond to that, check your privilege. Um, if ra is racism really even an issue anymore, appropriate response would be, again, check your privilege. Um, if they're so poor, they should just get a better job. That would be considered, a, again, a privileged comment. So those are some, that's kind of the, the way it's being used in, uh, you know, modern vernacular. So I, I will say this. Um, I was going to ask you examples of, of white, uh, of check your privilege, but you've already answered that. Um, well, I have I have more specific ones, but sure. Do, do you, well, give me some more specifics. I do. I'd love sure, to hear. Sure. All right, go ahead. So, in you, so particularly, um, some of this has come a, come about in higher education, uh, and I did do some looking up of specific programs, and um, there is there are marketing campaigns on different college campuses um, where they are trying to make people become aware of privilege. Um, and I'm just going to read to you some of those campaign posters that are kind of distributed on college campuses. Um, so the first one is becoming aware of privilege should not be viewed as a burden or a source of guilt, but rather an opportunity to learn and be responsible so that maybe we may work toward a more just and inclusive world. Um, and again, this is where I, I uh, got the best definition for privilege, right? It says on these posters, unearned access to social power. Privilege is un unearned access to social power based on a membership in a dominant social group. So underneath on each poster, they have um, 
check your privilege and then there are boxes to check. And those things to check are white, male, class, Christian, cisgender, able-bodied, and heterosexual. So those would be considered privileged. Um, Here's some of the, here's some of the other wording. I should probably define cisgender at this point because I wasn't entirely sure I understood that one. Um, cisgender is a description for a person whose gender identity, um, gender expression, and biological sex all align. So that would be anybody who has sort of normal sexuality, heterosexuality, um, or attraction to opposite sex. Um, so some examples of all these posters are, if you can use public bathrooms without scares, fear, or anxiety, you have cisgender privilege. If you can, the next one is, if you can expect time off from work to celebrate your religious holidays, holidays you have Christian privilege. If you don't have to worry about how to get um, up and then the, um, to, it's to a building that's up on a hill, um, you have able-bodied privilege. Uh, if you're confident that the police exist to protect you, you have white male privilege. If you cannot be legally fired from work because you're of your perceived sexuality, you have heterosexual privilege. If while growing up, college was an expectation of you, not a lofty dream, you have class privilege. Uh, if you don't have to think about it, it's a privilege. So, as I mentioned, white male, class, that's the, the socioeconomic, Christian, cisgender, able-bodied, uh, meaning not disabled, right, and heterosexual. So um, that's, that's pretty dominant in um, higher education circles um, currently. Um, so... I'm going to ask you some questions now, now that I've sort of defined and given you lots of examples um, and enjoyed watching your facial expressions. So, Pastor, um, I think it's good for people to uh, use their gifts or the things that they've been given in life uh, for empathy and to care for others and to love and serve one another. Um, criticisms of uh, some of these campaigns are um, that it comes out of very progressive liberalism, um, and it sort of creates, um, it's divisive in the sense that it sees the world, again, in terms of victim and oppressor, and it sort of oversimplifies and divides who we are as people, right? And so it's kind of, it's kind of doing what it's setting out not to do, if that makes sense. Um, and they're tell it's almost, it, it's as though they're telling people that they're somehow offensive because of sort of who they are, that they had something they have no control over, which is what I'm saying. It's kind of, it's kind of doing to others, what you don't want to have done to you, if that makes sense. Um, so again, it's, it's a very much, um, a kind of an oversimplification of, of, majority identity, different as, as, as ethnicities, and sort of assuming things about people. Um, so those are some of the criticisms of this, this program. Um, and I just don't kind of know how it's necessarily always helpful. So my question to you is, um, we've got lots of kids that are going off to like, attend college, go off to college campus, uh, campuses. Um, how do we kind of keep our Christian worldview, love, and serve our neighbors when now it looks like we're even be told, being told our Christianity is privileged? Um, help. Well, there's just so many problems here, um, and I think you touched on a few of them. Um, in the attempt to not make, to, to sort of, make us all one to be together we're dividing people into tribes and we're and mm -hmm. and 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 we're making the thing that so i think it's probably that someone was was made to feel that their their color their race their ethnicity was a negative and 
and now they're making others feel the same. Okay. And we're not, we're to be clear, we're not saying that that's okay. We're not saying. Oh, no, 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 no. That that's so like it was bad yeah. and now it's bad. Yeah. And so really this is repaying evil with evil. So there was, there was bad and now that's bad. You follow me? And then certain expectations of, of, of the universe are suddenly bad, you know? Um, but let's, let's sort of, let's get our worldview, your question to your question. Cause I, I I'm sort of, um, the answer is Christ it has to be the, my identity is baptized. That's who I am. Other people are people for whom Christ died too. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reject the argument. I'm not going to pay attention to, um, the color, even of my own skin. Um, and I'm going to make it all about Jesus. And, and I'm going to reject the notion that somebody is good or bad based upon something them. Um, uh, and, and I'm also going to be aware the anti-Christian nature of this. When you start making Christianity a bad thing, there's the key. Um, nuclear family, bad thing. Two parents in the home, bad thing. Um, uh, desire to, to better yourself and to pull yourself into a better situation, bad thing. High expectations for you educationally, bad thing. When you start doing that, you've crossed the line. Now, we are in all... We, we need to make a distinction between original sin and something that we're constructing. Original sin is this inborn desire to be selfish, all right, to see everything through our own lenses um, and make us the center of everything. Incurvatus in sa, turned inwardness. Concupiscence makes it all about me. All right, here we're making it, um, we're constructing sins that don't exist, and seeing evil where there may not be, and there's no way to call it out because every way that we call it out, that's your privilege. The greatest example of this that I saw was in Minneapolis. Yeah. When the when the defund the police stuff started, and somebody mm -hmm. and, a, and a reporter asked somebody, okay, look, our listeners are like worried that okay, so if we defund the police and somebody breaks into their home, they want to call the police, what's gonna happen? And the, and the city councilman responded, well, that's just demonstrating their privilege. Okay, again, that doesn't answer the question of how we're going to get rid of the robber that's breaking into our house. Um, that just says that, you're, that you believe that police is, an, expect, is, is, a, is a, an expectation based on race. Now, I want to come back and make sure we understand that, that, that judging someone based upon their race is evil, period, the end. All right? That that people that are afraid because of their race, evil, period, the end, all right? That that hurting or harming someone based upon their race is evil, period, the end, anti-Christian, all right? But constructing a sin and putting the worst construction on somebody solely because of their race is also evil. Feeling bad about yourself because of how you were born, evil. The color of your skin, evil. These are all things that don't help us they don't help for unity. They cause division. And it's the oppressed being the oppressors. And it's repaying evil with evil. So I think we have to sort of recognize and step out of the system and say, I'm going to reject this whole system. Um, I'm going to reject the idea that I'm going to judge you based on your race and you're going to judge me based on my race. Where I have that sin, where I have that incline to not, to, to not like you because of something you I'm going to confess that to you and forgive, and we're going to move on. Um, I remember when I was little, when, when I'm sorry, when one of my sons were little, we went to a theater and my son, um, he was pretty young at the time. And there was a, a person from an, another ethnicity sitting next to him at the theater and he didn't know what to do. And he was, he was sort of rattled by that. And it was a great teaching moment for him. I was like, son, God's children come in all of great colors and shapes and sizes. And there's a bunch of gifts there and you should, and you should see that as gift. And, um, and we had a great teaching moment there. So where we, where we have sin, we should confess our sins and receive forgiveness, but looking for sin and calling someone else for sin for, they may be something that they didn't, you know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. 
Look, I almost didn't go to graduation because the expectation was high school graduation because the expectation was that I was going to go to college. That's not a sin. That wasn't a sin. You know what I mean? And and please don't tell me that it was it was because I had parents that were privileged. My dad didn't my dad my dad made a year in college before he dropped out. So he just wanted a better life for his kids than he had. There's nothing wrong with that. But what is wrong is the idea that we're going to judge somebody or we're going to look down on somebody or we're going to we're going to turn our feeling of impression or that we felt bad because of our race or we felt like we weren't we we missed out because of our race onto someone else. So much evil here. We're going to have to maybe look at this again, I think, um, from a different thing. I think we're going to have to we're going to have to look at gender soon and we're going to have to look at we're going to have to follow this up because I think a, you don't agree with us questions. Put them in yeah. the put them yeah. in the comments, because you know yeah. if you think I have said something unclear, because I do that a lot. Well, there's a lot um, here to unpack. There's a lot right. to unpack. I think here. we should look yeah. at it again, and we'll take your questions and we'll answer them. But look, I want you to know Christ died for you. I don't care. You know what I mean? That's what I want you to know. And and Christ died for me too. And we were all strangers. And we were all outside of the faith. Unless you were born Jewish, God was not for you before Jesus. You know what I mean? Uh, and if you are Jewish, God is for you only because of Jesus. And so we're all in this together in this place where there's neither Jew nor Greek, nor slave nor free man, male nor free. Uh, I mean, we're all one. All right. Erica Jacoby is the confer- the executive director of Higher Things. <laughs> Uh, job's almost there. <laughs> the executive director of Higher Things has been moving week and the dog was sick today and it was just been You're doing great. You're doing great, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But um she's executive director of Higher Things. She is the face that runs the place in Higher Things. She is also um our woke expert. Erica, we'll see you mm-hmm. next week. We'll be privileged to have you. Oh boy. Christ died for you. He died for all, which means he died for you. He died for your neighbor who looks like you. He died for your neighbor who doesn't. He died for your the parts of you that you like, and he died for the parts of you that you don't. Um, whatever that is, he died for you. And that's the answer to this. That's the only answer. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things video short.